What's going on guys? So if you came across this video, you probably just got a new iPhone and you wanna transfer over from your pre-existing Android device. I'm here to tell you, you're not gonna have a good time because I've been trying to transfer for the past week and it has been one of the worst experiences of my life because I just get sent to this website. Move to iOS and guess what? It doesn't work. So I'm gonna show you some of the reality that you're gonna to have to face when it comes to transferring over from Android to iOS and some things that can make your life a little bit easier. But you know what isn't easy on this channel? Our sponsor, Nobody. All right, so I'm going to leave some of the complaints I have for the end of the video, but for now, let's talk about transferring over from Android to iOS. So first and foremost, if you already have a pre-existing iPhone device like this one, this is my iPhone 13 Pro, the original one that I bought when it first came out, you wanna go over to your settings, you wanna to go to general, go all the way down to reset iPhone and erase all content. Now, before you do this, please listen to me. If you are doing something else, if you have me in a different tab, if I'm on like one volume, Turn me up, click on the tab. This is very important because I am not responsible for what's about to happen. Please make sure to back up your device before you wipe your phone. If you have a pre-existing iPhone, you can back it up to a MacBook. That is typically what I do. I trust the cloud, but local is always gonna be 100% accurate. But if you have the opportunity to transfer over to the iCloud, I would highly recommend doing that. Um, just because if anything, were to go south and you actually want to go back to your device that was already set up, you can just restore from that backup. But given the context of the situation, if you already have your device backed up, go ahead and erase the iPhone. Type in your passcode if you have a passcode associated with the iPhone as well. All right, so I know a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about might be a little weird, but this is the stuff that has worked for me. So you wanna go over to settings, go to Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi connection you have if you're in your house make sure to set the auto reconnect to be off. The reason why we're doing this is because whenever you do the transfer from Android to iOS, the iPhone actually makes its own wireless connection and you don't want it to switch back to your main home network connection while the transfer is happening. That is sometimes how the connection ends up dropping. The other thing that I want you guys to do, which I don't know why Apple doesn't give the option to, is go down to your display, scroll down to your uh, screen timeout, and then you wanna select the highest amount. I have some configurations on my phone, so I can't set it higher than 10 minutes, but set it to the highest one that you have. This is the other problem that you're gonna see here shortly when it comes to the iOS side. Um, but the last thing I also want you guys to do, which might be a little strange, is if it is a new iPhone, you probably have some SIM card uh, tool removal. I want you to remove the SIM card from the Android device. Now you don't have to completely take it out, I just poke it out so it just says that, hey, there's no SIM, that's completely fine. You just don't want it to fall on any other network while you're doing the transfer. You also don't wanna get phone calls, text messages and stuff like that. You want this phone to be in a pretty good state. Um, so lastly, you need to download the Move to iOS app. And if you go to the App Store and you notice that it has that tons of one-star reviews, trust me, they're accurate. It's a pain to do this. All right, so, oops. Also, make sure your battery is probably a lot healthier than mine um, at 25%. But let's go over to our iPhone and do the transfer process. So you're gonna have the setup process, click on English or your respective language and country. I'm okay with the default appearance and set up without another device, that's completely fine because we're assuming you're using this as a first time iPhone user. If you have a Wi-Fi connection, you can connect to it on this phone. All right, so once you typed in the password to your Wi-Fi, it should take you through a couple prompts. So now it's just taking a few minutes to activate your iPhone. It's not gonna take anything up to a minute. It's probably gonna take less than 30 seconds. There we go. So data and privacy, you wanna continue. And then you wanna set this up for yourself. If you're setting up for a child, that's fine. Face ID, we can come back to that later. And then we wanna create a passcode. For now, I'm just gonna skip that. It's completely fine. And this is where the problems start. So yes, you have different options to transfer, but we're transferring from Android to iOS. We wanna click from Android. And it's saying that we need to download the Move to iOS app on the uh, Play Store. So we already have it downloaded, completely fine. If you don't, they have a QR code up here that you can scan for your Android device. 
So it says enter one time code. So on your Android device, you want to open up the move to iOS app, click on continue, agree to the terms and conditions. I don't wanna send the data and it's saying that the battery's kinda of low. So let me actually get a cable real quick. All right, so I'm using my MacBook to charge my Android device, a little bit weird, but once you're past this setting, it says find your code, you wanna hit continue and then type in the code you see here on your iPhone. So it's 995137. It's connecting might take a couple seconds and it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna to connect to this device? It should say iOS and then some letters here and numbers. You wanna click connect. You're crossing your fingers because you're hopefully you're gonna see this preparing screen and this is what you get. Now, I'm gonna let you know right now, if you don't see this screen, I highly recommend you do those steps that I said. Disconnect the auto connect for the other Wi-Fi settings. Um, turn your display settings so the screen timeout is up and then just eject your SIM card tray. If you do that, I've been able to get to this screen consistently with no problems. So now let's talk about some of the problems with this transfer option, right? So first things first is messages, which I would say is probably one of the most important things when it comes to moving from device to device. Your messages on Android to iOS, the reality is it's not gonna be a clean transfer. Individual messages are just going to disappear altogether or just end up in a random group chat that it creates. I don't know why that happens. I don't think there's any way to prevent it from happening. Um, so you kind of just have to, you know, be okay with whatever messages get transferred over from your Android to iOS device. The reality I would say is instead of being upset that messages are either gone or just end up in some random group messages, it's better to have some messages than no messages at all. So you kind of just have to take with what you will when the transfer happens. Um, I would say probably my most recent messages are there, but stuff from like even two weeks ago aren't there anymore or just swept up in some random group chat. Contacts, you can enable this. I highly recommend that if you have a Google account and it has your contacts synced to it, just sign into your Google account on your iPhone or just enable the setting and it's going to transfer everything over from there. Having a Google account linked to your iOS device is gonna make things a lot more simple. Same with the calendar as well. This is where I would say don't select photo library. Your mileage may vary. As you can see, I have 112 gigabytes. It's not gonna be a fun time. My recommendation is for this process, just think of this as like a one-time thing. If you have Google Photos, just back up your photos to Google Photos and then on your iPhone, download Google Photos, sign into your Google account, all your photos are there. If you want to use the integration that Apple has with its native photo app, you can download your photos and videos from Google Photos to your Photos app and then you can have your fun there. But when I have this option enabled, I almost always have problems. So I would not enable the setting. Apps. Apps is a bit of a hit or a miss. I would say if you wanna start fresh and just download app by app as time goes on, you can do that. I would say it's okay for me to have the apps. I have a lot of apps um, installed on this device. I think it's like over 200 apps, so completely fine with that. Um, and then display settings, accessibility settings, and then this is also another interesting one, WhatsApp. So this is actually going to start this whole process of moving chats to iOS. I really don't know why there's just such a barrier going from Android to iOS and iOS to Android, but you can't seamless, seamlessly transfer your chats from WhatsApp to iOS without using this process. And I'm telling you right now, once again, if you have me on another tab, open it up, turn up the volume. Once you are past this step, there is no way in order for you to get your chats from WhatsApp to iOS unless you wipe the device again. I will say it again. Once you are past this process, you will not be able to get your WhatsApp messages on your Android device to iPhone you, unless you wipe your device and do this process again. Is it stupid? Trust me, it's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard of in my life, but that's just the Apple way. I apologize for the lighting or the things have changed a little bit. The overhead camera died while I was talking about the WhatsApp. Um, but like I was saying before, it even tells you in bold right here, you will not be able to transfer later if you skip this step. So if you primarily use WhatsApp, which is probably like everyone else in the world outside the US, you want to do this step. So I'm gonna click start and 
keep your phone unlocked and this app open. This is why we're keeping that screen unlocked to max. So it says you'll be redirected to the move to iOS app to complete the transfer. Hit next. All right, so I have 197 megabytes worth of data from WhatsApp that's gonna be transferred over. And to be honest, to make this process a little bit faster, I'm actually not going to transfer over my apps. So I wanna hit continue and it's gonna give you an estimation time. It might show upwards of up to like 16 hours, but it's going to decrease as time goes on. You also have to cross your fingers and pray because that's the only thing that I've been able to do because if this part fails, you're probably gonna run into this over and over again. You're gonna have to wipe the iPhone or reset the iPhone, try the process again and again and again and again. So cross my fingers that this works. The other thing that I wanna mention that I think is also pretty idiotic by Apple on this front is that you want to keep this screen on until it starts showing you the time of how long it's going to take. Because I feel as though once this screen goes off, there might be some type of like network drop that happens because the iPhone detected that it's locked and there hasn't been any transfer happening. So keep this phone on. So if you see it dim, just tap on it. So I see a little bit of a blue bar, it says about 28 minutes, I'm good. You can leave the device to do its transferring. I feel a little bit better just tapping on the screen ever so often. I know this might be annoying for some people, but just keep this in mind. You're only doing this once, and once this problem is done, you never have to do it again. So it's taken me about 13 minutes. I really don't know why the iPhone doesn't have a setting. Like every other Android device when it comes to transferring data from one to another, that just has a button that says, keep screen on. Like how hard would it to be to implement something like that? So also to give you guys a peace of mind since I am doing this on camera, I'm actually just going to do a time lapse of this and I'm not going to tap on the screen anymore. Um, just to show you guys that if this device screen does go off, okay, I was just tapping the screen and it just said transfer complete. So a little fishy, but you can click on details here and it'll tell you exactly what got transferred over. So as you can see here, the messages around 72,000 were transferred. It's a mess. I'll show you guys in a second. Contacts were transferred over, events, accounts, accessibility settings, display setting, and then WhatsApp. So also it tells you at the top here, the total amount that has been transferred. So I'm going to hit continue, and then it's gonna ask you to do all this Apple ID stuff. For now, I don't care, I just wanna get into my iPhone at this account, or at this point, so I'm just gonna hit, don't have an Apple ID, set up later in settings, which is completely fine, agree to the terms and conditions, continue, continue, enable location services, this is how you're able to get some of that stuff. Um, so you can take your SIM card out, put it into your new iPhone, for now, I'm just gonna skip that. Continue, oh, actually, I don't care about Siri for now. Don't care about that. Share with Apple, don't share that. And set that to auto. This might turn to dark, oh, still daytime here. And just like that, bit of a glitch that happened there. Um, but yeah, my messages are popping back up, as you can see. And if I were to go over here, WhatsApp isn't currently downloaded, but if I click on that, um, you have to have your iCloud account in order to download apps from the App Store, kind of like the Google Play Store, so do keep that in mind. So if you wanna download WhatsApp, make sure to set up your Apple ID, it's completely free. Um, but yeah, if we go over to my contacts here, you'll see all my contacts are listed here, um, like my iPhone. There are some that are labeled no name, which I think is a little strange. Um, they don't even have a number associated to them. My recommendation for contacts overall, if they didn't cleanly sync over, um, just go over to your settings, scroll down to contacts, and then you have this account setting here. Click on accounts, and then it's gonna list out your Google accounts or any device you want transferred over. You can also add some as well. Click on that, and then just select contacts, calendar, notes, mail, things like that. Do keep in mind that once you transfer over, you do have to re-enter your password, so it might take a couple seconds or minutes for it to sync up, but that's my recommendation on getting your contacts, um, your calendar stuff synced up to the iOS side of things. All right, now going over to photos here. If you notice, there are no photos. Like I said, my recommendation is instead of doing the photo transfer, which is going to take a long time, just go to the app store, turn off personalized ads as well. Um, search for Google Photos. Did they change the keyboard in iOS? It's kind of weird. Um, anyway, five stars, by the way. Uh, download the Google Photos app 
and just sync up your Google account and then download the photos you want and then they will appear here in the regular photos app. Um, if you want the transfer to happen as fast as possible, that's my recommendation. So hopefully you guys found this video informative. I appreciate every single sub, like, and comment. I know if you've ran into this problem, you have much more frustration than I do. It's just the reality of going from Android to iOS. There are still some problems that I hope can be fixed in the future, especially with RCS coming to iPhone later this year. Hopefully that makes transferring messages easier once that comes out. But if you guys found this video informative, if there's any other tips and tricks that made this process easier for you, please let me know down in the comments below. Share it with the world for anyone who might come across this video. Also share this video for anyone who might be transferring from Android to iOS. I think this is probably the fail safe proof way in order to transfer over because the problems that I ran into, everyone just kept saying, go to this website, go to this website, go to this website. I even called Apple, I'm like, I'm having problems. Guess what they say? Go to the website. You think I haven't done that? I'm not that dumb. Anyway, hopefully you guys appreciate the video, the informative video. Um, appreciate every single sound like and comment. And as always guys, much love. For my WhatsApp people, once you have an Apple ID and you download the WhatsApp app, this is the screen you're going to see. You wanna hit agree and continue. So put your SIM card into your phone and type in your phone number at the very beginning that was used on your previous device. There's gonna be a confirmation screen letting you know, is this in fact your number? And then it's gonna send a code to your previous device. Now, don't be alarmed if you don't have that Android device anymore or if you're stuck in some screen on the previous device. My recommendation is just wait till that timer runs out and you'll see need help getting code. Now you can resend the code or SMS. My suggestion is use the call me option that has worked for me every single time. So I'm gonna take the phone call, it's going to let me know what the number is. I'm going to type in the number and then it's gonna do the validation and you're gonna see this screen. So you're gonna hit start, hit start again, and it's gonna say, hey, can I approve these photos or can I have access to your photos? Hit allow all and then it's gonna import your chat history. It's gonna take a couple seconds, highly just depends on your network connection. Recommend doing this over Wi-Fi at your house or a place that has good internet speeds. And once that's done and you type in your name, um, you can allow contacts access for this just so it can sync your contact list with the phone numbers and your WhatsApp should be good to go. Hey, just wanted to throw this in here for those of you who selected apps during the transfer process. You're gonna be wondering where your icons are when you go to the home screen. You want to look for this screen when you first click on the app store. After you do that, you're going to see your apps all over the home screen. They're not gonna be downloaded, so if you actually want to download them, go ahead and click it. Apple just does this to optimize space. So first and foremost, for some reason, Apple is requiring you to wipe your device. I Terrible, terrible take. Let's do this again. What's going on guys? So if you came across this video, you probably picked up a new Android device and you wanna switch over to an iOS device for some reason. Apple decided it's a good idea that you just have to wipe your phone every time you wanna to transfer to it. Makes absolutely no sense to me. Anyway.